Start recording. And I'm going to share my screen. You think they could come up with a less robotic voice for sharing in progress? <laughs> I know it's in 2022. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little threatening. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Agreed. All right. Well, hi, everybody. Um, I'd like to welcome you to the metrics model meeting. It's good to see uh, friends here again. So why don't we go ahead and get started? Um, we do have one open um, PR. It's really not worth taking a look at too deeply. Sean, I tagged you on that. It's oh, just it's to update it. the it's just to update the readme so that it is in line with these. Yep, you got it. Uh, yeah, we'll so merge. Just making sure those are all okay. That pull request is now merged. Thank you very much. So, um, all right. So we a couple of things we want, I want to talk about today is Elizabeth had put together a toolkit. Um, okay, so and I, I think it's straight now. So anyway, we we have the metrics models, which are these, right? And the metrics models are a collection of metrics that are meaningful in some way, right? So whatever that focus area is, we all know that. Yes. And the toolkit that Elizabeth put together um, was a way to think about really, I think it's about deploying the metrics model as we talked about today. So if I, well, I don't even need, you can take a look at that link. Um, and it takes us here. So Elizabeth had put together a, what what's called a toolkit for an open source event. And let me walk through this a little bit. So on row 18 here, we have a, a metrics model, which is the DEI event badging program. And that is this metrics model that we've put together. And we have a why you should care. We have associated metrics that help define this metrics model. I think we need to fix this a little bit just to align with the toolkit. But And then I, I think we have two implementations then at this point, and Kevin and Elizabeth and Sean, who are on the other the community call today i think this is kind of where we are landing with this that that we have ways that, that these metrics models can be implemented and in this particular case in the case of the dei event badging program elizabeth has written up a way that you could actually deploy this if you would like by yourself and so this toolkit is saying, okay, so for this metric, this is going to take about two to four hours for you to think about in your project. This has an implementation difficulty of intermediate. And here are some really pragmatic things that you can do to move this metric forward. That's no. for, that's extremely helpful, especially for the things that can't be derived from trace data. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So I think this was this finally like resonated with me after the talk today, and then just kind of thinking about it this afternoon. That in our metric, oops, sorry, in our in our metrics model, um, we have this implementation section, and Sean, this would be where if it's not something that can be necessarily implemented from trace data, we can create a toolkit. I think that's perfect. That's exactly the right thing to do. And if it's something that we can implement with a Jupyter notebook or a Grafana dashboard, you yeah. can provide that link here as well. Yeah, and and for those um, that haven't been on the community calls, Daniel Scardo from Grimoire Lab and I and a few other folks are getting the working on a chaos wide software contribution team to try to strengthen our software development community or software contributor community around these metrics models using both grimoire lab and auger to implement metric models so, so we we are yeah. not limited at uh, chaos scream lab and auger um, any other no you're not you know if you got some other tool yeah we could if we could absolutely incorporate any other tool into this that's great, that's great. Um, i don't i don't think it has to be a chaos tool um mm -hmm. we would welcome the inclusion of that tool in the chaos project but but it does i don't think we're 
we're snooty that way. <laughs> <laughs> so does this does this resonate with people, Kevin? Does this kind of align with what we we're how you were thinking earlier this morning? Kevin, you're muted in case you didn't realize. He knows that. Yeah, I, oh, I, okay. lost, <laughs> I lost my mute button, so uh, I found it. Uh, yes, it, it, it resonates. So I think there, uh, I, love, I love the idea of toolkits and having uh, 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 a way to uh, point, uh, point users to this, this, this document that provides, provides utility for them. Yeah, really. Uh, however, I would I would reiterate what I had said in the community meeting. The the toolkit isn't the this isn't the the metrics model. So and I know part of this oh. discussion we're having right now is about how we're going to the release process for the metrics models. So the the creation of the toolkit is a different discussion than the metrics model release process, in my opinion. So just to be yeah, clear what we're talking about. So yeah, I'm not uh, talking about the release process right now. And, and, and I agree. Like, this is this is this it, this is the metrics model. <laughs> right yes. Here. Yeah. Here, yeah. Here's here's how I would frame it. I, I would say that we've built metrics that we've decided can be when they're put together, they create a model that provides something useful. However, that metrics model is not intuitively implementable in a consistent way. So just the metric definition isn't sufficient to implement the metric model. It's these word that Matt used about what Elizabeth did. What's the word? Implementation? No, the, the toolkit. The toolkit. The toolkit is is how it's a it's a description of how you bring that metrics model to reality in a in a common way. And without the toolkit, I think the actual metrics model has limited utility. I think the met, I think the toolkit provide is what gives the metrics model, especially for these things that can't be measured with trace data, utility. Because like then then you have something concrete that you can look at and and understand. It's like layers of an onion. Yeah, in some ways, yes. I, I think without these toolkits, that would be hard to realize yeah. having these metrics models and anything approximating consistency. I think the, to me, the, I, I agree. Anything that we can move towards implementation, the better. I do think the metrics model, even without a toolkit or an auger like deployment, that's helpful. Right. It's helpful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that is helpful. I, yeah, I don't, I don't think it's non help Yeah. Yeah, I think, I think, I think what I'm articulating is that one of the things that we can do as a community to keep chaos itself sustainable is help people yes. walk the whole path yes and this toolkit is a really big contribution to that process i think yes so okay great uh, one uh, by the way i have one one question so uh, this toolkit is uh, is for the uh, for the each of the single metrics we have a way to implement it we provide something like a toolkit or the way to implement it. Do we have any, um, I mean, the comprehensive way to to combine those uh, metrics in those model, in this model to re re represent as a value or number to say, okay, th this uh, the final score of, of this uh, metrics model. The final score of the metrics yes, model? Like uh, to using a number to describe that yeah we could we're always really hesitant uh, to it would just be I, binary you know it would just be like yes you did these things or no you didn't oh, do things, i you think because this is exactly what we do in the the event badging application is we kind of go through this checklist and see if they've how many of these things have they done uh -huh. uh, so you could i mean that's what we do in the badging but it would just be again just a yes or no not like a yeah. fail yeah but, uh, we don't have to be, you, you know, using the 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 normalized way to say okay, all those metrics model have to got 
the, the one number, but for the each of single matrix model, we got one number to represent. If you have this uh, uh, such way to do that, we, we would recommend to do so, to show that how to combine those metrics as a matrix model represented as a, as a score. I think uh, scoring is based on like, we are not assigning weightage to any particular metric within a model. Like scoring is you, either you check mark, yes, you have implemented that metric or you have assigned some weightage. To, for example, if you look at this uh, DI badging, we have a code of conduct at event. We are not assigning any weighting or any scoring to this metric. The scoring can be either yes, it is implemented or it is not implemented within that uh, toolkit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's In, like a checklist. Yeah, it's, it's, okay. more like, it's more like, it's more like, yeah, it could uh, say, okay, it's, uh, it's already implemented. And also, for example, for the code of conduct at the event. So how much like uh, it has been achieved at this goal? Uh, like uh, we use zero to 10, 10 means, okay, this, um, this matrix has been measured and uh, it's achieved the, the, the fully score. So we, we do kind of do this in the DEI event badging. I mean, but, but to Elizabeth's point and to Vinod's point, we don't have a zero to 10. So if an event has a code of conduct, they just get a yes, they get a one. Okay. okay. I mean, we do ask also like, can people find it? Is it publicly available? Do it, does it, does it include X, Y, Z um, parts in the code of conduct? So, I mean, we do kind of drill down a little, but at the end of the day, it's still just checking boxes. Oh, like, okay. yes, there's a code of conduct. Yes, it's, it's publicly available on the website. Yes, it's, it includes what to do if there's a violation. Yes, it includes, you know, the support that a victim would get at it. You know, so it does have a lot there. Um, but yeah, I don't know if that answers I, your... I, I mean, we, I agree. I, and I think uh, we don't have to do this so hurry. And uh, we, we will say that it's like Ani, like, like Matt mentioned, we can do step by, by step forward. To first, we, we, we introduce this toolkit for each of the single matrix model. And then we will say if you need our score or number to represent the, the final result. Uh, and for do. now, yeah. And for now, I think the checklist in this, uh, I mean, DEI event badging matrix model, it's, it's good enough. Yeah, and listening to you talk to Yui, like some metrics models, some toolkits may be more appropriate for scoring, and some may be less appropriate for scoring. And we could just yeah. make that determination later. I do think uh, I do think we want to be careful with with uh, if we do kind of create a system that would allow for scoring. I, I think we do want to be careful in in us assigning the scoring to it. Uh, more use use language where the person who is adopting this model could determine what weighting and what scoring would be important for them. Yeah, I think there I think there would be cultural factors that that would lead to weighting different things different ways for sure. Uh, I think that there are situations where we're needing to assign a checklist like a boolean would create complications and it depends on the specific metric. So for example, uh, criticality is something that's designed around a number, um, whereas um, secure design principles is another metric um, is naturally a Boolean. So I think it depends on the metric. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Great, good. Hi. I have one question on the toolkit, just for my clarity. Is toolkit same as like a guideline for implementing Augur or Grimoire Lab? Like we have a model which is implemented in Augur or Grimoire Lab, and we have a tutorial how to uh, install or deploy Augur or Grimoire Lab. So, so is like, that a same thing as no. a toolkit? I'm going to say no. I, I think like, the, toolkit, the toolkit's a, a fundamental 
process and set of guidelines for implementing things that cannot be measured with Grimoire Lab or Augur. So, so that in that way, it's it's it requires the gathering of data. And I think part of what the toolkit's giving us are, is a systematic way of gathering that data. So if you go to the metric model tab, we have an implementation section like uh, if you go to the metric model, uh, like a uh, DI model, uh, that, yeah, we have an implementation section where we have this toolkit. So in this implementation, we also provide like implementation in Augur or Grimoire Lab. That's where I'm comparing. Is it same or is yes. it different? Yes, so if, if the metric model can be described using Augur or Grimoire Lab, that's, we, would, we would indicate that here. Okay. The tool kit is no bad, John. I think there's this, there's two categories of, of metric models. One can be derived from trace data, and another yes. cannot. And if it cannot be derived from trace data, these toolkits are invaluable. Okay. Yep. Even even if they can be derived from from trace data, I think there's there's still value in creating the the toolkit uh, so that we're we're not. Uh, dependent on uh, chaos software, for example. So, well, there's a, there's a presumption that the metrics that are like, if it can be derived from trace data, there's some presumption that the metric definitions, regardless of the tool are defining how the model is implemented. Yeah, so, I think it's really common things because in some communities, they already have some, I mean, the platform or, or tools that exist to marry to marry the, the community health. So they have to find a way to implement it. If we provide this toolkit, they know how to do that. Yeah. Even even we already have solutions in Green Web or Augur, we can do the similar thing to following the, the guideline of the toolkit. Yeah. All right. Um, this is great. So Elizabeth, thank you so much for taking the time on that toolkit. I think it was really helpful in the metrics model discussion as a whole. So that's great. Because uh, this is something that we're going to run into or come up against <laughs> at some point. And it's nice to start having this discussion now um, and see it in practice. And I always like to see things kind of in like um, on paper, so to speak. You know what I mean? It helps really guide the discussion and frame things in a nice way. So thank you for that. And I, I, have, I, have, I have a simple question. Mm, do we have to um, push our results of this uh, DEI um, to the Kales office website? Um, no. So, so if you do this, if you implement this metric model for an event that you host, I, I don't think there's any requirement that you post the results with the chaos project i think no. we're trying to help you yes not 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 act as an overlord mm. just to trying to help the project and not uh, to list this um, our goal yeah our goal is not, to help not, not, not to this okay yeah i don't i don't know that we we probably wouldn't want them to add badges to their events chaos badges to their events so it's probably more of a they could say that they followed chaos standards in in creating the uh, in uh, creating the event. Am I am I understanding that question well, so correctly? Ba badging is a badging is something we've created, and it's something that can be accomplished in a standard peer reviewed way for an event. I think some of the metric models that can't be measured with trace data for a project that are not event based those are different things those would be laborious to badge and i think it's sufficient to let the projects determine through these word i cannot remember tonight um toolkit toolkits you know you know just to say that we followed the toolkit from hey, chaos to uh Bye. To June's point, I'm sorry to interrupt. Um, to June's point, I, I completely understand what you're saying because if someone's using this toolkit and their results are different or they 
like it took them way longer than two hours or they had some feedback. I would really like eventually when we publish these to have some sort of feedback mechanism so that people can add to these toolkits or like, you know, comment on them or something um, to make it a little more collaborative. Because quite honestly, a lot of these were just flat out guesses on my part. Like, I don't actually know if it's going to take one to two hours. That's what I guess. That's what I'm guessing my best guess. So I think it, to June's point, I think that would be awesome if people did kind of um, make it more collaborative. And, and if even if they don't post the results, if they want to, you know, engage with us on that, I think would be great. Okay. okay. Maybe we then add a disclaimer at the end of it. Like if you feel this is not up to the mark or anything, you can create an issue or provide a feedback via issue on a GitHub or some other platform. The, how, I, I like Elizabeth's framing of collaborative. And issues can be collaborative. Yep. <laughs> okay. Absolutely. Call me. Done. Let <laughs> <laughs> me get your number in there in a second. 24 7, always on call. <laughs> All right. Thank you. This is a very, this was a great conversation. So, um, could we, I'm going to move us to the next one. So, I think we've made it through here. Yep. Uh, we want to just talk a little bit about the release process because there are actually a number of metrics models that are honestly kind of ready for release. We've gone through and kind of answered the questions of why you should care. We've thought about some of the metrics that help kind of define that metrics model. Um, I mean, we've been doing some of quite some of the work in, in terms of getting these released. So. Um, Kevin, do you want to talk a little bit about this? And I, or I can talk about it too, but I have this up right here. Uh, yeah, I suppose, I suppose I can, I can talk about this. Uh, okay. So I did, so I did create this document to kind of outline, uh, to allow us to compare the metrics release process with a, with a proposed metrics model release process. Uh, and the, uh, I will say this, so the, the, the metrics release process, the, the way we treat the metrics in chaos is kind of like we're creating a standard. Uh, so a standard around community health metrics. So each metric gets its own markdown uh, page and we go through a 30 day review period, uh, 30 day public comment period, and we release these metrics on a kind of a six month cadence. Uh, any changes to the metrics uh, require us to go back through that release process again. And there's a, there's a whole checklist that we go through when we create these documents. And the, the, reason, the reason for that is to kind of create a rigor and validity in how we're, we're defining and presenting these metrics. Uh, so the, the metrics are released in two ways. Uh, we release it as a PDF which is kind of a static snapshot in time of the of all of the metrics. Uh, and then we also keep a kind of a, a running continuous release of metrics on the website. Uh, so that that continuous release uh, allows us to continue to to edit and make changes to the metrics uh, in between the, the six month release cycle. So for the metrics model release process, I am proposing something less, uh, less rigorous and more informal. Uh, so I don't, uh, I personally don't believe that these models have the same kind of permanence as the, as the metric standards do. Uh, I think, I think we have to be a little more flexible with these documents and kind of treat these documents as kind of an ongoing uh, conversation. Yeah. I mean, so, we'll, yeah, it will implement them and uh, iterate on them. I right. Agree. So I'm, so I'm proposing that we have no set cadence for the release. Uh, we would, we release these when they're complete. Uh, and we go through an informal review process and by informal, 
What I would envision is discussions in this group and collaborative editing, and maybe presentations of the model to relevant working groups uh, so, and, so and unlike, maybe the community meeting. Unlike, unlike a metric where some degree of consensus is required around defining that granular piece, these are these are utilities that that can be used and have been used together and so we release them when we think they're ready and they don't require this review process because they're actually constructed from things that have already undergone a review process if i think i'm hearing yes. it correctly yeah uh, additionally, the, an additional problem that we're going to run into as we start creating more and more models is that some of these models are going to be very similar to each other. So there are, there are probably four or five models that I can think of that are going to be very similar to how welcoming is a project, for example. Uh, and when we're creating these models, I think it's going to be interesting to explore each of those different models, even though they are very similar. Uh, so if we're, if we're really you know, rigorous about the structure of these uh, uh, these releases, and we we kind of treat these as uh, kind of these these static or permanent documents. Then I think uh, I think we kind of lose out on some of these conversations that we can have. So so I guess what I'm saying is these these documents have they're a little more impermanent, right? We we shouldn't be afraid to create a new model that's similar to an old model, and we shouldn't be afraid to abandon a model. Uh, if it's not interesting to us anymore. Uh, so just yeah. more informal in general is what I'm saying. Okay, I see what you're saying. And I think if we go through a process of starting to define a model and realize it's very similar to an existing model, maybe we just iterate the existing model. I mean, that, that's an option as well. So how it is different as like we are reviewing the metrics, already released metrics. We are iterating them, we are uh, changing them, and then we are re-releasing them. It'll be the same thing with the model. We are iterating them. If we feel any change, we can uh, review them again and iterate them and then re-release them. And same as the continuous release we have for the matrix. Like I'm trying to create a difference. Okay, we have a continuous release. When the metric is ready, we release it. And in a formal six months cadence, we release them. So same, if a metric model is ready, we can continuously release them. And in a formal six months time, we can announce all those models that has been released. The theme that I'm hearing is that the models are less formal. Right. So they're, the, they're constructed we, from the formalities of metric definitions and they're, they're just less formal. Yeah, and we, we, can, we can iterate them and edit them and they can grow. Uh, but a metrics model is not the it's not the definitive way to understand this one thing that we're trying to, to answer right so how welcoming is a project there could be there could be multiple different models that let us explore how welcoming is a project and we mm -hmm. don't need to we don't need to create a definitive model for it is what i'm saying yeah i mean the way i see these being applied in practice by ospos and tech companies is the metric model is an inspiration it provides a place to start and they may add or remove things that are more applicable for their context but but we're helping them not start from zero when it comes from it comes to creating useful products from the collection of metrics so in this process i think there are two questions that we kind of need to discuss and and iron out a little bit further and that is what is the what are the artifacts that belong in the metrics model release is it just that metrics model document or uh how do we decide what metrics need a toolkit is this is this a conversation we need to have now uh or or can we just say we're just doing this metrics model document and we can have this toolkit conversation later. I have an opinion, but I've talked a lot, so I will wait to hear from others. Uh, so that's one question I have, and then I'll, I'll drop the other question that I have, uh, and then I will be quiet because I've talked a lot. Uh, well, and then the other question, the other question I have is, what platform? How do we want to 
uh, release these. Uh, and I have I have thoughts on both of those things, but I will uh, I will be quiet now for a while. So the first question is, how are they presented? Is that right? Now the the first question is, what artifacts are included in a metrics model release? Is it just that metrics model document gotcha. that we have a template for, like this, or or do we have to account for a toolkit document or? Uh, or, or something else, yes. Right, and I was even thinking on that, like based on the earlier conversations, like could we actually release a metrics model that had nothing in this section? Yeah. Like there's there's no Grafana dashboard, there's no Jupyter Notebook. I think we should. I don't think we should wait for the development of the toolkit because that takes longer. It does. I, I, I agree as well. Uh, uh, yeah, I, I think we should release. It is uh, like uh, how I perceive or maybe we can implement it in the future. These are the ways we are listening from the community that they are saying they need these things. We, they are not implemented yet, but these are the thought processes of the community that is thinking on those lines. So we can release okay. that. And as and when we have implementation, we can add that to that uh, template. Since it is being in like informal, so we can update or iterate on that. Right, exactly. Adding the implementation line should be, if it's done, it should be pretty low overhead yeah. to this yep. document. Other thoughts? And I would I would say if we are releasing toolkits that would uh, connect to these models, I think we would probably use the same kind of informal release process that we're describing for the models themselves as well. Sure. Okay, other thoughts from other people? I think that the value of the toolkit is high enough that um, it uh, might be incorporated into the model itself since they are roughly one-to-one. -one. Um, I don't know if I would hold back on releasing the model before finishing the toolkit um, but um, I don't think I would consider the model to be useful until I'd considered the actions in the toolkit and had a feeling for how practical it was to actually run through these metrics. So I had two questions on that, Lucas. One, were you are you suggesting that, for example, this toolkit right here, I don't know if you can see my screen, but okay. So this toolkit, are you suggesting that like this text would simply be added to this document? Because right now it's two documents, right? Yes, I am. Okay. And then you were also agreeing that um, it's okay to release a metrics model without having these, <laughs> but that's something we should probably strive for <laughs> if we're going to be releasing metrics models to at some point have a deployment in some form or fashion. I think that's a good paraphrase. Um, I think that um, before releasing a metrics model, we want to really believe that it's practical. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> For the toolkit. That's some sort that's, of san sanity check. <laughs> yeah, that's that, uh, insanely wise. <laughs> So I think the the first one, your first comment of, I mean, potentially just including this text in this, I mean, that's something we can certainly talk about. And then the second one is really kind of a process thing that I thought about as well. Like, I don't want the release of metrics models to start outstripping our ability to do implementations. So like in month one, we have you know, 10 metrics models and eight implementations. And then in at the end of year one, we have 25 metrics models and 11 implementations. And at the end of year two, we have 100 metrics models and 12 implementations. Like, I don't, I don't want that to get really wide over time. Those two should be, I think, fairly, fairly in sync with one another. Do people have comments on Lucas's comments? Comments on meta comments? So uh, if I'm understanding that correctly, so 
you're wanting to have a requirement for every model that we create to include a toolkit. Is that correct? I think um, if it, uh, depending on the model, a toolkit may be necessary, but it depends on the model. And I think that before we consider a model finished that we think about what's in the toolkit and be sure that it's practical. Uh, I, I want, I'm not certain I have a clear enough definition of a toolkit in mind um, to, to, to be really confident about that. Like I'd wanna think about a toolkit for every one of the models. And, and I believe what it's about is fundamentally um, getting real about applying the model. W would you agree, is that, is that right? Yes, yeah. it's like having it in practice in some form or fashion, yeah. whether it's on a dashboard or through some work that you've done in a community. I, I would say that for, um, for the purposes of my own goals, that I would feel unsatisfied with what I had delivered if I didn't include a toolkit. If it helps at all, that whole document that I wrote took me about an hour and a half. Hmm. Like making a toolkit is not that hard, I don't think. Especially if all the pieces are there and you're just kind of pulling it together in one place and kind of adding and filling in details about like what you think the time will be and, you know, breaking it down. So it could take longer, but um, it was not unwieldy. I should yeah. say that. In the, in the last meeting, we did also have a discussion about limiting the number of metrics that we include in these metrics models, like trying to, uh, mm -hmm. trying to keep the conversation down to a, a manageable number of metrics rather than this is every single metric that we can think of that would, uh, that would be applied. Maybe just pick four or five metrics. Mm -hmm. that's, that's much more manageable for a, a toolkit than 20. Agreed. Yeah, I think that really brings that point home, <laughs> whether it's for a toolkit or for a deployment in Jupyter Notebook or Grafana Dashboard, only four metrics is <laughs> certainly something that you can think about doing. Uh, I mean, for some compli uh, complicated scenarios, I, I mean, we could uh, add, uh, you know, like uh, hierarchies, hierarchical uh, models, like uh, one model could uh, include uh, multiple uh, sub-models and that could divide into the, uh, I mean, Fair. Uh, yep. the kind of model size. Uh, and, and directed a sift the graph of models sounds exciting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this is good. Thank you. I, I Personally, I'm all for releasing metrics models even if they don't have an implementation. But to Lucas's yeah, point, I think, I think we need to think about like, is this implementable? I, I just, I wanna get these metrics models in front of people, but I think we as a group need to have like a, a very conscious effort towards implementation, whether it's through a toolkit or whether it's through a Jupyter Notebook or a Grafana dashboard or something like that, that we don't get those too far away from each other. Yeah, I just wanted to add, because at the end of the day, that's why people come to chaos, right? Is to not just see all the ways that they can measure stuff, but like, how do they do it? And what does it mean? And like the deeper conversations, that's what they want. Um, it, you know, you can go to GitHub and see how many issues you have open right now, you know, and, and a lot of that stuff is, is readily available. So I think that what you just said, Matt, makes perfect sense, because that's really the whole point of it, you know? Right on. Uh, all right, cool. Um, all right, Kevin, did you, did you want to talk about, you had a second question too? Yes. Yeah. Have... And I'll just, uh, I'll just re, uh, so, so what I'm hearing is that the toolkit is not mandatory for the release process. So the release process that we're talking about is really just about that, that metrics model document minus the toolkit, and we can add toolkits in at a later date, either into the document or as a second document. I think so. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So I'm saying it's not mandatory, but to Lucas's point, we, we kind of need to do a sanity check. Okay. Yeah, uh, for the, uh, oh, sorry, go ahead. Is this metric not insane fantasy? 
roughly speaking. Yeah. Okay. Maybe um, th that can sort of stand in for the process that usually accompanies a metric where there's there's a pretty good amount of checking that goes into a new metric. But in this case, we would say it's not as strict, but it definitely does exist. We do go and review and so on. Okay, and then in, in regards to whether or not the toolkit text is in this document or it's a second document, I think we should hold off on that until we have decided on the kind of how we're going to yeah. present the the models uh, and which which leads me into that second question that I had is and that is how are we going to present these models <laughs> and uh, my thought on it is actually building on what both uh, uh, Elizabeth and Emma have have been have been mentioned in the past and that is uh, a knowledge base on the website. So, uh, so I, I would like to, uh, over the summer when we do our website revamp, I would like to create a project where we, we basically create a, a metrics knowledge base on the website where we can interact with these models and link to the toolkits. Uh, and if, if possible, I would like that knowledge base to have some, uh, ability for others to uh to engage with it uh I don't, i'm not sure what that would look like either the ability Ooh. to uh to edit or uh, like a wiki yeah yeah maybe a wiki i was kidding but okay uh <laughs> i mean not not a wiki but something that has some of the qualities of a wiki what do you got so, against wikis sean nothing i love wikipedia <laughs> Uh, wikis are awesome you leave them alone yeah i know i love wikipedia <laughs> uh, but the, the design of what this knowledge base would look like is is a that would be a, a completely ongoing uh discussion <laughs> uh, but in general like if we're i don't think it would be helpful to create a big pdf of all of these models together and all of the toolkits together I think the way that people are, would use these is more in kind of a searchable knowledge base. And, and maybe you have the ability to print off a PDF from that knowledge base page, uh, but it's uh, matching with the, the previous conversation. It's, this, is less, this is less formal. So the, uh, we don't necessarily have to treat these models the, in the same way. So I do, to your last point, Kevin, I do like the idea of a downloadable or um, shareable single page PDF that is has a nice graphic design to it. I think the personally, the metrics models are starting to be to me artifacts that would be exchanged and given to people as conversation pieces. Uh, so I think Spending a little bit of time on how they look could really be beneficial for us. But this would be, it would be printable from the website rather than <clears throat> let's create a PDF to, to capture the information, right? So the individual user could go to the website, That's fine. search yeah. the knowledge base <clears throat> and, and then print the PDF content that they, that they would like, right? So it's not a, it's not a PDF that we've created and stored in advance. Yeah, yours is you're yeah. you're kind of talking about like how it gets created. I was thinking yes. about like the end the end. I don't <clears throat> particularly care about how it gets created. I was just talking well, about well, well, the how it gets created is important because that that adds the element of 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 when it was created. Oh right? no, was no, it, no, no, I was I'm it created by it, us when we when we did I'm the not release. It's not important. I'm just saying. I agree that how it's created is important, but just the kind of like what it looks like at the end. Yeah, like this this artifact that this exchangeable artifact. I think is is useful. That's all. I wonder about um, using um, a, actually using the wiki. I think that it fails the goal of having things look really great, right? Now, wiki always looks pretty choppy, but it is editable and fluid, and we can post uh, what we have sooner rather than later. So it is a, 
it is kind of another platform that we would end up having to manage. Yeah. Uh, so right now we do have a WordPress site and there are there are plugins, mm -hmm. knowledge based plugins that we could grab fairly easily uh, uh, to do this task. Uh, also, we could we could just design design the web pages around uh, markdown pages as well. So similar, and that would be a little similar to the way we do the uh, the metrics currently. Uh, and the, honestly, the, the knowledge base and the markdown pages, they may be compatible. Uh, I wouldn't know until I got in to look at those, but. Uh... If we are thinking in terms of Wiki, then I'm thinking a question like if we release a model as a Wiki, uh, anyone can come and add it and add their feedback or change the model. Right, I think that's the advantage of the wiki. Thank you, I have to go. All right. You gotta go? Yeah. yeah, bye, Lucas. Later, Lucas. My son is in big trouble. Oh, well, good luck. <laughs> Who's in big trouble? <laughs> His son. Later. Oh, uh, well, yeah, well. He'll be a dad. Okay. That's part of being a son, <laughs> speaking as a former son, or I'm a still son, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> so wikis wikis do have access control so it's not just that anybody can go in and edit them there is there is access control on 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 wikis uh but the but the benefit is definitely that we would have a platform that that theoretically anyone could come and edit so i'm just gonna i'm gonna double down on my gotta look nice thing i think this is my this is one of our first things that that stylistically gonna... you mean yep yeah that's what i mean yeah i i do think beautiful things are more easily consumed yeah i just uh, added a link uh, about onipe who created wiki for years uh, i used to work in there uh, in that in that project and uh, it's uh, it's sharing everything on that wiki page and uh, every page can be can be explored as a pdf format okay Kevin, we lost your video if you are still there, but I don't know what happened to Kevin. Kevin? Right. Matt, I can't find those old uh, Mozilla pages that we had, but th like they were just so impactful. That's it. Yes. It's... The toolkit pages. Is that what you're talking yeah. about? They just yeah. look so nice. I can't find mm. them, but they're incredibly impactful. And I think that they look beautiful. So we should. And we have the funds to hire a designer. So. Mm. Um, okay, we're out of time. All right. Thank uh -huh. you, everybody. Great discussion. Thank you. Yeah, this was good. Uh, thank you, Kevin, for kind of walking us through that process. So yeah. if you're there and you can hear us, know yeah. that we're saying thank you. Yes. Thank, <laughs> thank you, Kevin, if you haven't been absorbed by the comment. <laughs> All right. Goodbye, everybody. Bye. 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 Bye.